and welcome back. As promised, we're going to be looking at uh, the part two where we make a cone by taking a linear function and wrapping it around the y-axis. So let's get to it. Okay, if we take this one here, we'll, we'll take y equals negative 2x plus 2, just a classic linear function, and we will uh, say that, okay, we won't go higher than uh, this place here. Let me get the right color pen. We won't go higher than y equals 2. That's going to be the, the tip of our cone. And then the base of the cone is going to just be the uh, x line. And then, of course, we're going to be wrapping it around the y axis. So let's see how that's going to look out. I went ahead and had the computer draw the, the next step. So the area that is bound by the y-axis, the x-axis, and the function uh, of this line is this little green colored area there. And then we will wrap that area around and as you can probably see in your mind it will make this nice little cone there with the the base that is kind of in a turquoise color. Uh, so <clears throat> if we look at our little display again if, if you think of it as a bunch of little disks, uh, this time we'll be using actual numbers for it, but it's still going to be a series of disks up on top of each other, and they, you just get more and more of them, and they get thinner and thinner, and eventually, after we integrate, then we get the volume of this cone. All right, let's see what we can do. We have the standard uh, volume formula, for integrating this and like we did in part one uh, it's it's still this same same uh, way of working we'll have pi because remember a disk when you have uh, a disk and boy that's a great circle Dave <laughs> maybe I should just let the computer do everything uh, when you have a disk the area is pi r squared so that's that's where this pi comes from the radius of the disk because we're wrapping it around the y-axis is going to be uh, what we did before where we had some kind of x there and then you see that that's going to be the radius when we solve in terms of x uh, so let's just continue then we'll, we'll see how this develops the dy of course being the thickness of the disk now from our function which was this. There's our linear function. We have to do something because we have to change it. We need to solve it in terms of x because x is going to be the place where we have the radius right there. Now I've marked it out there. So the x from here, which is that, that distance. If it's 1, then that's a distance of 1, and it's the same radius up on top there. Uh, if it's 2, then it's 2, and so on. <clears throat> But we have to have it in terms of x in order to uh, take the integral of it. So here we go. Let's take the next. OK. When we solve for x, it's, it's just a, a rather straightforward thing. I'll, I'll let you guys play with that yourselves. Uh, but as you can see here, we need x squared. And x squared I've, I put here in the blue. The, the normal x, that's here, the white. And then when you square it, you just use the FOIL method, and the blue information here comes out. And that is what we will be putting in to our little formula here that's all in red. So let's go ahead and take the next step then. All right, now this is going to look <laughs> kind of busy. I wanted to do it all in one fell swoop because not much really changes. See, 0 is C, and 2 is D. So you, we just start replacing what we know. Uh, remember, we have, we have our base here. We're starting off at y equals 0. We go up to y equals 2. And then what, what is the base? What is the maximum? 
that, that we're going to have. And well, you guys that know linear functions are not going to need an explanation for that. So we'll just look at these steps and see, see how it goes. We take the blue here because that's x squared and we're, we're replacing that one with the blue right there. Okay. And then our dy, that's just the thickness of, of the disc. That's still going to stay the same. So what happens when we take the antiderivative of this blue part here? Well, remember, we, we're starting off with a, a y squared, so of course we're going to get a y cubed. We have to compensate for that, uh, and that's why we have a 12 down here, because it's really a 3 times a 4. The 4 was there to begin with. Uh, but because when we take the derivative of, of this, we have to end up with that. So just always do a little run in your mind to, to see what's happening. And the next one, what's the antiderivative of negative y? Well, that part, of course. And then the antiderivative of 1 is just y. So it's, it's really kind of straightforward. Uh, the only thing that's tricky in the beginning is just what's here in the orange box. And that is, okay, we have a function, linear in this case. We have to rearrange it so that we know what x is in terms of y. Then, according to the formula, we need to have x squared, so we just, we just do it. We take the x, we square it, and this blue part is what comes out. All right. Now, once we have the antiderivative and we know where to analyze it, and here you see that I'm doing it kind of the American way. Some textbooks will have one line right here. Some will have two lines for the whole function. Some will have brackets. Uh, I prefer the cleaner, um, more American way that I grew up with. If, if you don't like it, you could do it the way that your particular book is showing. But what it means is we're analyzing this from 0 to 2. So the zero part's going to be really nice because y is in every term. So this will go away at zero, that'll go away at zero, that'll go away at zero. So really the only thing we have to look at is what is it when uh, the, the y is two. And that's, that'll be kind of easy. As you can see here, I've already cleaned it up. And <laughs> these parts are really nice. They just drop out, negative two and positive two. You just get two-thirds left, and two-thirds times pi is what is in this little green box here, right there. And now to convince you, I'm going to take another page where we look at the old way of doing it. Remember back in, I don't know, fifth grade or something when you would say, okay, find the area of a cone and you would go to your little formula book you say okay there it is we have pi r squared h divided by three and when we do that and of course we know what the r squared is that's from there to there that's the base of the cone the two was the height pi is just pi and then you divide it by three and you get the same answer that we just had before as you remember there's, there it is. This, of course, it is a more difficult way to do it, to, to do the in integration, but it also can give you a general formula that we can then use for all cones. Now, the point of this wasn't to, to find the easy method. The point was to learn how to use this particular method of finding the volumes of rotation. So I wanted to show you something that you could then easily confirm in your mind that it, oh, it really is true because I already know how to do the volume of a cone. 